But what is an American? They like to think of themselves as being the contents of some great metaphorical melting pot. But I prefer to think of America as a delicious blender drink in which various cultures have been pureed together, each having left a solid bit of clumpy matter that stubbornly refuses to be sucked up the straw. And that's the drink we're serving this evening. So open wide and prepare yourself for the tasty treat we call Americana. of foods on offer in America is staggering. Cuisines of all nations and many concoctions found nowhere else in the world find their way down the collective national gullet each year as a matter of course. But no matter how exotic or obscure, all foodstuffs must have one thing in common if they're going to satisfy the big hunger generated by hard-working, carbohydrate needy Americans. Quantity. If you come here to Dumas Walkers in Mount Prospect, Illinois to eat, you can of course stuff your face with any number of delicious dishes. But you can also take a shot at that most elusive and desirable of commodities. The free meal. So, Kat, how, how come I get all this food free? You don't unless you eat it all first. How much do we have here? We have two pounds of meat and two pounds of fixing, so it equals four pounds. Has anyone ever done this and lived to tell the tale? Oh, yes. And okay. you're going to do it today, too. All right, I'll give you the best shot. Thank you. Okay, we'll time it from right now. Half hour. All right. Could you get me a Diet Coke to go with this? Sure. Only in America would a restaurant reward you for being a pig. Food-loving Yanks like to describe their country as the breadbasket of the world. Unfortunately, they don't stop stuffing themselves with their homegrown goodies long enough for the rest of us to get a taste. The USA produces so much food and is so proud of that fact that they no longer seem to know if they're eating through actual hunger or just over-consuming to be patriotic. As far as food, I, I'm a pizza freak. Oh, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely proud of the hamburger. I could eat a hamburger every day. <laughs> I think of southern fried chicken, cornbread, grits. There's a lot of soul food around still. Maybe a black-eyed pea or two. Chitlins, for example, which are pig innards, but they've been cleaned very well. And a nice piece of apple pie with some ice cream on top, vanilla preferably. That's a real good American food. The tomatoes we like real well. I had three for breakfast. The wife doesn't like tomatoes, but then we have the cucumber. The whole family likes that. America has a higher percentage of obese citizens than any other nation on Earth, even Germany. It's no coincidence, then, that Americans came up with the concept of the diet product a low-cal item that is combined with the fattiest foods known to man to make what is known here as a balanced meal. I'm not here to mock the well-fed, but rather to celebrate them. And to do that, we must face facts. Americans are big. They're huge. They're fat. They're fat because they pile their cheap, abundant, stupid food high as hillocks in their big, fat, stupid shopping carts while they waddle through the humongous supermarket you find on every corner. Sure, we've got supermarkets too, but the supermarkets in America are so overwhelming, you need a native guide. Mine is the writer and executive food consultant, Mel Marco. That's right, I like food. I've been known to have some. Yeah. Mel offers keen insight into stupid, fattening food, although she herself can only aspire to someday being stupid or fat. Big fat guys is what we're all going to be. Big fat, stupid there are an guys. Awful lot of we're there really, first. Really fat people, aren't they? I mean, it does seem to be a. Uh, or it's not really fat, so much as more of a pear-shaped kind of a thing, <laughs> which I'm, I think is more attractive. Yeah, uh, sort of an attractive obesity. Yeah. You're saying there's something wrong with being fat. No, I think it's quite uh, quite pleasant, but it's uh, like a national look now, isn't it? <laughs> That's right, it's a national look. And then there's, uh, but then you seem to spend an awful lot of time selling stuff which is, and presumably buying stuff which is fat-free and diet and no-cal or low-cal, and it doesn't seem to be doing any good whatsoever. Uh, well, uh, that's an interesting point. It's the only point I have to make on the subject, <laughs> so I'm really pleased it's an interesting one. Or else, when, where would we be then? We'd just be left high and dry with nothing We'd to say We'd be here about. walking by annoying this guy. 
How you doing? He's Good. white as I it is. I recommend some of the diet products on that. Now, see, talk food. about that. Now, here, this is pretty funny. Aunt Jemima Light. It's it's light pancake syrup. Pancakes. This is only half the calories. Pancakes are what? Said, well, there you go. You're laughing. You can feel those pounds falling off you as you eat. We're in the, the, the cereal lane. I suppose that's what it would be called. Cereals are one of the best things that we sell here in America. One of the big major food groups. Yeah, it is. And it's one of the four food groups. You've got your cereals, your diet colas, uh, your uh, pasta salads, and sugary treats. Well, I notice here that most of them seem to be linked to either a famous person or sort of cartoon character. Or... That's right. But see, I've seen the Paul Newman one I've actually heard of. Yeah, Paul Newman's got a pasta sauce. His is distinguished by having real wacky copywriting here. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't even know what it means. I think Paul Newman lost his mind here. Working 12-hour days, wrecked, hungry, a wife home, deserted by a wife and children, cursing, scanned the cupboard. Now, that can't be spaghetti. him. You suppose Joanne Woodward left him? That's Tom Selleck he's writing about here, isn't <laughs> it? So, this is Bert Reynolds' spaghetti sauce. We made yeah. a terrible mistake. Then we've got... This is Sinatra's got... Oh, some. yeah, Sinatra. That's quite a nice picture, Frank, actually, isn't it? That's it sort is. of like the... Yeah. Uh, that's from, like, about 69, I would have thought. Yeah. How come he hasn't chosen one of his more recent publicity snaps to put on this? <laughs> I think this is the last time he ate yeah. any of his own songs. And you could put this in with the Sinatra toupee kit that you can buy in the other, the other aisle, I believe. Right. So celebrity endorsement is the big thing. Is it all for just well, uh, personal you know, gain? Because, or you know, well, well, part of the reason is when you, when you look into it, the celebrities have such wonderful lives. Yeah. Like we learned about Princess Di. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you look beyond the facade, it's solid people who really have advice they, they can give you. And let's think, who, who better to endorse food than a bulimic? <laughs> well, she hasn't got a food yet, but yeah, I, it can't she, be far beyond. I, I'm sure American manufacturers are on the phone permanently. Well, all the, the celebrities in America are all either in rehab clinics or they're like, uh, you know... But that's a great... I'm just sort of because she's a reform bulimic, so she could do a commercial that says, something I can keep down. That would be the tag, <laughs> wouldn't it? That would be good. You like crackers? I love them. Yeah, well, they, these are my favorite. I buy these because I like to root for the little guy. They have this slogan, surprisingly delicious taste. So they were sitting around at a meeting and maybe they thought, actually, these are quite good after all. Yeah, it's like such low self-esteem. They're saying, we're edible, sure, we're edible. You know, so that's why I buy them. It's kind of, I like the root for the little guy. Because at their meeting, they probably have other crackers there, which they really enjoy, and then they're forced to eat their own product. And they're like, oh, <laughs> it's not as good, but yeah. surprisingly delicious. That's rather sad, isn't it? Yeah. The meat-based diet favored by Americans is often accused of being bland, no matter how big the portions. So those Americans for whom size isn't the issue must seek out more exotic fare. Give Americans a morsel and they'll take a meal. Give them a meal and they'll demand an orgiastic pig out. Give them a nice juicy cut of some perfectly fine cow meat and they'll want to devour the flesh of some creature they've probably never even seen alive. Here at Zimmer Foods in Lockport, Illinois, Mr. Richard Zimmer provides the opportunity to feast on lion, camel, zebra and even hippopotamus, all to appease the jaded American palate. The hippos we got were different sizes. The one of the legs we cut off, I bet you it was at least 40 inches long and maybe about 18, 20 inches wide. We use it as a display here in a counter. Uh, hit a little tiny bone, about your round, but the rest was all meat. Uh, the meat is very dark red, uh, no fat whatsoever. Uh, very pleasant tasting. It is a vegetarian, so there won't be any real strong taste or anything. When I came around in the late 50s, early 60s into the business, there was a more desire to have game animals. And so the family started investigating and finding out how we can get people to raise things for us. We now have game farms all over the place raising different animals for food purposes. What kind of people buy this stuff I use? Is it just out of curiosity, okay. or do you have people who really seek out the, the meaty flavor of lion? Oh, well. We do have a variety of people that shop here in the store. There are the curiosity people. There are the local people that just want to try something new. Um, they have friends visiting, and they may want to cook something uh, uh, different. This is quite, quite moorish, isn't it? Yeah. But it's very chewy. Yes, very chewy. Of course, that's the dried aspect of making a jerky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be all, all meat jerky, I suppose, yeah. a bit on the chewy side. Right. This is a nice, a pleasant, um, different twist on man putting his head <laughs> in the lion's mouth, isn't it? Yeah, never thought of that. No. Yes, that would be true. <laughs> and the alligator is? It's a piece of alligator. It's hard to say what's unusual anymore since I've been in it so long. Uh, rattlesnake is not exactly a farm-raised animal, but is something that we use all the time. We have a back order of hippopotamus. Now, you can't keep it in the store. 
It's, uh, it, it goes out so fast. It just walks out on its yeah, own. Yeah, it goes, <laughs> not on its own, but it has, gets help by a box. What yeah. about, what about the, the strangest request you had? Do you ever have someone phone up and you just said, this person Strange. is sick? Well, we get requests for monkey all the time. I have calls for dog and cat. That would be unusual for a meat business. Uh, of course, horse too, but uh, we're not allowed to handle horse here. Do you ever get anyone come up and then, please don't be offended by this, uh, this question, but do you ever get anyone sneak in on the side and say, I've got a, I've got a yen for some human meat? Yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, um, but what about if I'm doing it now? I'm saying, yeah, Richard, yes. I just want a little bit of shank. <laughs> bit of human that would direct you to the nearest hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're cutting them off all day long. Yeah. How are you doing there? You got about 10 more minutes. Yeah. You got to finish everything on the plate. I'll be fine. Okay, thanks. Can you give me another Diet Coke? Sure. Food stores in America do offer incredible choice, and nowhere is shopping easier. But that doesn't mean it's convenient. There's one annoying obstacle. You have to get out of your car. But the lucky citizens of Faraday, Louisiana, can choose for an almost limitless array of gourmet goods on the go. That's because Faraday is home to one of America's first and best drive through grocery stores. Hello, may I help you? How are you? It's the Pick Quick drive through Grocery. The theory is, if food is designed to give you energy, why waste that valuable energy obtaining food? At the Pickwick, you don't. Shoppers can rest while Frankie Jean Turrell, the sister of Jerry Lee Lewis, scurries about fetching their groceries. The most popular things that we sell in this store would be, uh, we start off with Coca-Cola and uh, milk bread and then daiquiris, and you go on to uh, bourbons. We have wines, we have food, we just... We should have named it a general store because we have a lot of just general merchandise. How do your customers find out about the place? Do you advertise? We do not advertise at all. The only thing is just word of mouth. It's good. It's like if you're good to someone or something tastes good, you're going to always come back. If you're treated right, you get a hello, may I help you, thank you, and come back. Those two things are important. It's very simple to make a bit. You've got to work. We do about 16 to 18 hours a day, seven days a week. If only the register would go faster. It is, of course, a huge Hello, success. Okay. So it's lucky that years of breathing carbon monoxide have apparently had no ill effect on Frankie. 100. I'll tell you one thing, we've got some great customers. Our customers come back because they like the way they're treated. They like the conversation. They like the flow. Hello, may I help you? And thank you and come back. How are you today? Those things are forgotten. I think we're losing it. I think America's losing the personal touch. Everything is extremely fast, fast. Everything's mechanicalized. Everything is just pushed to you. You know, it needs to be hello, handed to you. And hello, may I help you, you know. Those things stick to you. Once you've been to a restaurant, don't you always remember the lady that said, thank you and come back. And if she really meant it, you can tell it by her eyes. Why do you think they like it? I mean, how much time are you going to lose just, just parking up and coming into a store? You're not really saving that much time, are you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. If you have to park a car, find a parking place, you must lock the car. What about the children? What about the family? What about the danger? There's danger in America. There's danger everywhere. The ladies come through late at night to get their milk, their bread, their soups, their cooking things. Everything is done late at night and they don't unlock their doors. I've noticed that. What about danger for you? You're here maybe just with, with your kids? It's looking very, we, every store in the area has been robbed. Each, each store, more than once. We've never been robbed, thank God. So far, we have not been robbed. Americans like to think of themselves as hunters, not gatherers. To them, foraging for food is no safer than it was in caveman days. Of course, Cro-Magnon Yanks would probably have devised drive through grocery caves. Do you have any kind of security or any kind of uh, weapons around that you would use? We have weapons and we have, uh, of course, we have weapons. We're Americans. We have weapons. We have them in our home, in our store. We have a camera, but it doesn't even work. <laughs> we don't have tight security. Only the family. Although she sells no petrol, Frankie's customers can still Hello, get have... tanked up. We have a lot of mixed drinks. Yes. We have a lot of bourbons. We have a lot of wines. We carry a full line of wine. We have everything. So you give people in, in cars drinks to drink as they go? Yes, package to go only, not to drink on the premises. It's with a lid, covered, give it to them, and they go home, drink it safely. The law says you don't drink and drive, so they don't do this. The law says you don't drink and drive, so Frankie's customers don't, especially not through the straw she provides. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Y'all come back. Have a good evening. All right.